So I've been trying to automate a system of immersive railroading uh, trains and while automatically starting and stopping them is still quite the hassle, routing them through a network is something that is doable. And so what I've done here is I have prepared a little network of essentially, you can think of this as a graph where each junction is a node and each um, branch, each labeled branch here is a edge, is an edge. And so what you can do to route one train from one station, such as this one, to another station is to give it a list of edges to follow to reach that destination. So for example, if we are stopped at station wheat, we can take we can use a simple pathfinding algorithm to find the shortest distance from station wheat to station ice. And we've, you know, obviously this would be implemented by some sort of computer, but we know that it is to go by, via W5, then F1, right? Alternatively, if we didn't have this sort of shortcut F1 line, we could go N6, W3, W7, N7, or N6, W3, N4, W6, and so forth. You get the idea. And each of these junctions can be controlled by a single computer, such as this one here, set up for example purposes. Um, in such a T junction, there are three switches which need to be controlled. This one here, which determines whether or not the train continues ahead into N6, or turns left into W5, by default heading straight to N6. Um, and so what we have is a detector that's hooked up to the computer and a redstone component that powers the switch itself, both of, with, both of which are hooked up to the computer. And I have this for this switch, which determines whether or not we go ahead to station wheat or turn right onto W5. And then finally, a third switch, which determines if we turn right on to station wheat or turn left by default onto N6. And so the way we configure it is like so. You can see that we have a little table of all three switches, the address for the redstone component and the address for the detector component, right? And what this enables us to do is when a train passes over any detector in, in this junction, we can look up what the redstone component's address is for that specific detector. And we know we have a little rule that states whether or not we're going to switch the switch. Um, and you see that here, um, for example, switch one, if I can find it now, it starts with detector C66. So, Yes, that's this one, right? So this is switch one, this switch. And when we look here, we see that switch one switches to W5 branch when active. So that means that if a locomotive is going over this and its tag uh, defines that it should take the W5 branch, then we activate the switch. And likewise for the others, you'll see that switch three, that one being right over there, is different from the other two in that it will switch, it'll activate when the train's tag contains station wheat, right? Meaning we're going to that station there. But let's give it a test right now. So we've loaded the switches from this switch.tbl file and reset it all of them to their starting positions. So first of all, I'm gonna do a boring proof of concept this uh, locomotive right here does not have any tag on it. And we are going to head over to the switch. Keep my speed slow so that you can see what's going on. You can see it does not switch, but we get some output on the computer. It says an approaching locomotive has an empty tag. It doesn't contain the what we're looking for to switch, so we're not gonna switch. So then, 
let's try and set the tag so that we can force this switch to actually switch. Just gonna go around the network. I've pre-configured these um, junctions so that they return us back to the starting root node. so we can go back to the station. Where I have a little program called TAG, which can both read and set the tag of the locomotive, so we're going to set it to W5, so we switch onto W5. Right. And just for completeness sake, I will set this switch, reset everything to the default positions, just so we can see how it happens. switch because the approaching locomotive has the tag W5 which contains the substring W5 thus putting us on this route towards W5 and so with this you can create essentially limitless junctions it does not have to be a T junction it could be a, a four a four um, four way junction this is just a proof of concept um, it could be a five or six way junction if for some reason you need that. But you literally just need to define a list of switches and what substring the locomotive has to have in order to switch to that route. And so if, for example, we were going to um, Station Ice, then our locomotive's entire tag would be W5 F1 station ice and that would be enough to route us through each of these successive junctions to the final destination and that um, I, I, I'm pretty sure that is sufficient for any routing and does not have to be limited to just a grid pattern like I have here but it should work the only problem still is the fact that a human needs to actually control the, lo the locomotive and that is going to be addressed once immersive railroading fixes up their actual physics so that I don't have to try and do integral calculus stuff on extremely unpredictable physics but yeah that's what I have so far and this can just be extended to put one computer at each junction and a fully functioning network. <laughs> 